Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, my name is Kelly Sullivan, and I am with Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. And I have a pop quiz for you. Who's ever heard of Pacific Northwest National Laboratory? Oh, thank God. Yeah. yeah, it is a lot more than I expected, actually. Is it just because I asked a question? That's, um, <laughs> um, and how many of you know how the Department of Energy works? Can you tell me? No. Um, so I thought I'd take a few minutes to, uh, to introduce my laboratory uh, and what we do, and then uh, talk to you about the partnerships efforts that we've done, um, some things that we're working on uh, moving forward, and I'll defend our work a little bit. Um, I set myself up, Kelly. You did, Tom. Yeah, we'll chat. <laughs> um, so there are 17 laboratories within the Department of Energy. Uh, we grew out of the Manhattan Project, uh, have a long history. And these 17 laboratories, of them, 16 are government-owned contractor operated. So I am not a Department of Energy employee. I'm an employee of Battelle Memorial Institute, which operates my laboratory on behalf of the department. Uh, Battelle has operated PNNL since its inception in 1965. And Battelle is the largest nonprofit contract R&D organization on the planet. Um, we also have uh, portions of the operating contract for uh, five other laboratories as well in the departments. So we have a lot to leverage. Um, this is uh, where we are. Richland is our main campus in uh, the dry side of Washington State. For those of you who aren't aware, most of the state of Washington is not rainy. Um, it's really rather sparse. Um, it, I think it's beautiful, but we have mostly sagebrush and not evergreen trees where I live. Uh, we have a site office in Seattle where we have a lot of our uh, computational work. Uh, that seems like a very sensible place for it to be, and it certainly doesn't have to be physically located with us. Uh, we are the only laboratory in the DOE system with a marine research facility. That's at SQUIM. Um, for years, I thought SQUIM was an acronym. I didn't realize it was a word. Uh, it was always all capitalized, so I didn't know. Um, and then we also have a, a site in Portland, Oregon, where we do a lot of buildings, uh, buildings work and building efficiency uh, efforts. And then we have a joint research institute at the University of Maryland in uh, global climate change uh, issues and policy work. So we are about 4,000 staff, or 4,500 staff maybe. Um, we have the most diversified funding base within the Department of Energy. Uh, you'll see that, uh, oh, I guess I picked the one that was by FTEs instead of budget, but that's okay, it's still about the same. Um, close to a billion dollars in operating budget last year, uh, about 4,500 staff, lots of patents, R&D 100 awards, FLC awards, which is Federal Laboratory Consortium Awards for technology transfer out of the laboratory. We have the most of those in the Department of Energy. Um, we are stewarded by the Office of Science within the Department of Energy. Um, you'll see that the Office of Science funds 24% of our work, but we are an Office of Science laboratory. Um, we actually have far more work in national security, uh, so the NNSA which is where Sandia, Livermore, and, and Los Alamos are, are uh, stewarded. Um, we're sort of their fourth lab in, in that, that sense. Um, in fact, they actually, when the uh, R&D 100 awards were announced, um, they put out an announcement about how many R&D 100 awards the NNSA labs had uh, generated, and we were on it. <laughs> um, I think they liked it because that gave them five more, uh, which was a third of the, the total that they, they cited last year. Um, so we have a significantly diverse funding portfolio. We have a lot of applied work done. I don't feel like I belong here because I'm a chemist. I'm not an engineer <laughs> at all, but, um, and, and I'm not in industry and I'm not at a university. So uh, I'll, I'll just go over here and, and chat with myself. But um, we have a, a, a tremendous amount of fundamental basic science work. We've got people working on you know, dark matter and, and those sorts of things we've got. But then we've also got people working on things like the radiation portal monitors. And so you've seen the, the, uh, the things that the trucks drive through at the ports of entry uh, for nonproliferation detection. Um, we developed those. We deployed those. We uh, have developed the, the uh, algorithms that allow that tremendous amount of data that's coming in real time to be analyzed to give us now what used to take a 10-day analysis, so you were looking at what happened 10 days ago at the portal entries, to now uh, 10 seconds. So that's a pretty uh, massive, massive improvement so that the uh, Department of Homeland Security has real-time analysis of, of, the, uh, of the ports of entry around this country and, and now at uh, other countries as well. So this is our mission. We transform the world through courageous discovery and innovation. And if that's not an awesome reason to get up and go to work every day, I have no idea what would be. Um, so what are we trying to do? And, and I asked the question about mission before, because I think this is, a, this is a fundamental challenge that we have. 
when we, we do want to have a lot of students at our laboratory, but we have a different time scale than, than what universities have, and we don't always, we are funded on an annual basis, and so it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes for us to figure out how do we make a, a thing that can be a thesis when we've got client deliverables and we're doing contract research versus grant research. Um, that, that makes it a, a more difficult thing. It's doable, we've, we've done it, but it does make for a challenge, and you have to have a, a university partner that's very willing to think about different models. Um, we're very interested in doing that. We have developed a joint appointments program, and if I did it right, that means that uh, anybody who's listed as a joint appointee, you don't actually know who their home employer is, right? Everything that they would do would be P&L and their other uh, institutions. So we have joint appointments with Brown, we have joint appointments with Washington State and University of Washington, University of Utah, many others. Some of them are our people outbound and others are their people inbound, and everything that they do is with both institutions all the time. Um, this made my lawyers very uncomfortable, but we got it through. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that we can talk about is how do we share, somebody asked about how we share talent. That's one of the ways we uh, sought to share talent with people rather than trying to poach talent. We thought we'll just, we'll just share it all the time is, and, and put people in the environment that they uh, are going to flourish in. Um, we've also developed uh, a number of joint research institutes. Some have worked better than others. And I think that uh, David's list of things, I could point to the ones that didn't work and, and to tell you where the failure point was on all of those. Um, but it is, it is, a, it is a long and an ongoing challenge. And, and one of the challenges that we have um, is people will identify themselves as the institute versus the, uh, the home institution. And, and then we don't get the, the reputation value that we're trying to get from that, from, from having created that research institute. People don't realize that the research is coming from PNNL. They think it's coming from this other thing that doesn't, has a separate identity, and that's a challenge for us. Um, so we want to figure out ways where, where the organizations that are involved in these research centers all get the credit for what's being done at those research centers because that's part of the, uh, the need for, for people who are, are uh, making the investments of their time and effort. Um, so in looking at the future of what can we do, um, I am a person who wants to think about how do we eliminate um, unnecessary barriers between organizations. Uh, I think that it's, it's very strange to me that Battelle operates or co-operates six national laboratories. And yet, for me to go work at another national laboratory that has Battelle in its contract is not a simple thing. I would actually have to change employers. That seems silly, but it's the truth. So I'm thinking about these sorts of things. OK, well, now if I want to go work at a, with an engineering research center somewhere, what does that look like? How can we make these things so that we, I mean, let's think about that 10-year barrier that we were talking about before and really think about what does the nature of employment look like and how can we change it to enable these kinds of collaborations to, uh, to really get us the kind of outcome we're looking for. I realize that may be beyond the purview of the National Science Foundation, but we may as well put some challenging questions out there in front of us. Um, I, think that, I think that you should think about how you can leverage your national laboratories because you're paying for them. Um, as part of your campuses, for those of you who are at university, I mean, we, we're there. We have amazing facilities. I would be more than happy to talk at length about our user facility, the Environmental Molecular Sciences Laboratory, which you all should have access to. It's, uh, as a chemist, it's a pretty, pretty awesome place to walk around. Um, the, uh, but why shouldn't you be able to use us as part of your campus? We want your students to be working with us, they, they energize our research staff, they help us drive, they're more creative, we want those new ideas there too. So let's think about ways that, that we can be part of your campus. There's, there's lots of things that we can think about in terms of, of uh, developing graduate, shared graduate programs or whatever it is. We don't give degrees, but we certainly have a lot to teach. Um, and then, I, I, I can't let it go, Tom. We are also the co-lead of the, uh, the Smart Grid uh, Lab Consortium. Um, along with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. And we have done a tremendous amount of work in uh, not only uh, um, modernization of the grid, but also in understanding trans, uh, transactive controls of the grid, uh, really creating new algorithms to allow operators to, uh, the grid is, it's an amazing thing. It's also operated in a particularly weird way um, with 3,600 individual utilities <laughs> and, and, and they don't share data with each other, but they are sharing it with us under proprietary agreements so that we can do research on that data and, and, uh, and understand how to operate the grid 
at its maximum capacity, which is an unknown number. Uh, so figuring out how to do that is, is a challenge. And we're actually delivering those tools to uh, utilities now. Um, PJM uh, has, has taken some of the uh, techniques that we've developed under uh, the programs that I fund internally in our laboratory. Uh, they're using them to do better forecasting of, of their, uh, their grid state and need, and, and they're saving themselves, uh, their words, not ours, $100 million a year uh, in, in how they, uh, they can operate their portion of the grid. So I think that, there, I think that there's a, a tremendous need for work in these areas, and I think that these engineering research centers can, can do a lot with it. But I also think that there's a tremendous um, need for communication about what's already being done because um, I, I think that there's an awful lot of research happening at your national laboratories that you don't know about, and that's not the same thing as it's not happening. Um, but sometimes it may as well be, because if, if you don't know it's happening, then, then it may as well not have happened. Uh, when I was a professor, I told my students, if you can't tell your story, you didn't do it. Um, so, so I think that, that that is something I would be more than happy to talk to people about, about the, the kinds of research that we're doing at our laboratory, how you can get engaged with it, how your students can get engaged with it. I have a, a list of names that I could give you for your, uh, your, cyber, uh, your, your grid cyber conference. Um, and so with that, I just want to make sure that people understand your national laboratories are your asset, they're your resource, and, and let's figure out how you can take more, better advantage of that system. Thanks. <laughs>